Now over the years, I've run with, tested out and reviewed lots of different running packs or hydration vests from all kinds of brands, whether it's Salomon, Kalos, Harrier, Camelback, Innovate, Ultimate Direction, and lots more. And I think a really important part of hydration vest ownership is how we maintain and take care of them. At the end of the day, these are expensive items of running kit and the more care and the better we look after them, the more it's gonna prolong the life. So in today's video, I'm gonna go through all the ins and outs of looking after our running packs. Welcome back folks, it's me again, Lloyd Purvis, and this is Run For Adventure. Hope everybody is fit and well out there in YouTube world. So we've got a slightly different video today, really hope you enjoy it, but more importantly, I hope you find it helpful. So over the 10 years that I worked in running retail, I did have the odd hydration vest or running pack brought back to me with some durability issues. Whether it was seams coming apart, uh, soft flask splitting or zippers that had stopped working. And I think a lot of these issues were coming about with the items because maybe they hadn't been maintained correctly to the point where they were falling apart. I've actually never had any durability issues with the running packs or the hydration vests that I've used. And I think a lot of this comes down to the fact that I just took really good care of them. So I would treat it like I did all my other items of running kit. So if I just used it on a training run or a race, I'd make sure I'd clean it and wash it through thoroughly as soon as possible. So I would never come in and just chuck it down in the corner of a room all smelly and sweaty. The first thing I tend to do after a run is grab the soft flasks out or a bladder if you use one, and I make sure everything is really well washed out, especially if I've been using sort of energy drink or electrolytes out on the run. So give those bottles a good rinse and the nozzles themselves. Leave them on the draining board to dry out. Once they're dry, top tip, what I tend to do is I put them in the freezer at home. And yes, it is a little bit random, but I've got a, a whole drawer in our freezer full of soft flasks and nozzles. What I tend to find this does is help stop any bacteria build up. It, it stops those nozzles and bottles getting all black and disgusting, if I'm honest. So then when I come to use them again, I'll take them out of the drawer. I'll leave them on the side for a couple of minutes before my run, just to thaw out a bit. And then your bottles are all nice and clean and ready to go. Next on the list is to go through all the pockets on my hydration vest and remove any rubbish that's built up over the run. So things like empty gel sachets, bar wrappers, stuff like that. Uh, in the Salomon Advanced Skin 12 set, the hydration vest that I tend to use on most of my long training runs and races, they actually have a really handy little rubbish pocket just tucked inside that main stuff pocket on the front. A great place to put those empty sticky gel sachets because it keeps them out of the way, stops all your other stuff in your pack getting all sticky and dirty. Uh, the other thing is, it's also quite easy to forget that you put rubbish in there when you get home. So like I said, I definitely make sure that I, I go through all those pockets and remove everything. Now, if I've been out for a long training run, what I tend to do is get straight in the shower with my hydration vest and give it a good washing off with the shower head, really focusing on those internal mesh panels that have been close to the body and the zips, making sure that I wash off any sort of salt buildup caused by sweating. What I tend to do on the zips while I'm washing them is just open and close them as I go, just making sure that I get rid of any salt buildup because that really can play havoc with the zips on your hydration vest. Once the whole vest has been thoroughly rinsed through, what I tend to do is try and squeeze out as much of that excess water as possible, and then I'll leave it hanging above the bath to drip dry for a good couple of hours. Once that's done, I'll put it on a, a good wooden coat hanger, hang it up above a warm radiator in the winter, or hang it up outside in the sun if it's summertime, just to finish off that whole drying process. And I'll go through that whole routine after every run that I use my hydration vest on. However, if I've used my vest for a long race where they do tend to take a bit of a hammering where you're, you're stuffing empty wrappers here, there and everywhere, and you've been sweating in it for hours and hours, I'll still try and clean it as soon as I can, but I'll give it a bit more of a thorough clean. So I'll fill up a, a bowl of warm water and that's just water, no cleaning detergent or anything like that. I'll grab a small soft bristle brush and I'll give the whole vest a real good scrub in that water. Again, focusing on those internal panels, real focus on the zips on the front pockets and the back pockets and I mentioned that little rubbish pocket I'll turn that inside out 
Give it a good clean just to make sure I get rid of any of that sticky gel residue that's built up over the course of the race. And then I'll follow that same drying process that we did earlier. So you can see pretty much all the cleaning and washing is done by hand. And I think this is the safest way to prolong the life of our running packs or hydration vests. But every now and again, I'd say maybe two, three times a year, I will pop it in the washing machine on a cold cycle. So around about 30 to 40 degrees, again, no detergent. You know, if you read the care instructions for most running packs, it will say to wash them by hand with no cleaning detergent. So I always think that is the safest option. It really isn't rocket science when it comes to maintaining your running carrying system, whether it be a running pack or a running belt. So if you follow these simple steps, I'm sure it's going to help to prolong the lifespan. And like I said earlier, these are not cheap items of running kits. So we want them to last a long time and we want to get a lot of enjoyable miles using them. The way I look at it is you wouldn't get home from a run, take off your technical t-shirt and your running shorts and throw them down in the corner all smelly and sweaty and leave them there until the next time you go out for a run, pull them on and head out the door because that would just be ridiculous. So I don't know why some runners tend to do that with their running packs. So let's show our hydration vests and packs some love because at the end of the day, if we look after them, I'm sure they'll look after us. Speaking of hydration systems for running, we've actually already got some great helpful content on the channel featuring lots of different running belts, hydration packs and vests from buying guys to detailed reviews. So if you're in the market for your first running belt or pack and you're a little bit confused, you're not sure which way to turn or you want to upgrade your current system, then those videos might be really helpful so what I'll do is I'll link them all in the description below in case you want to check them out. We've got lots of exciting running kit and shoes heading over to Run for Adventure HQ as we speak. So a new trail running shoe from Scott Running. We've also got the exciting new Apex Pro hydration vest from Camelback. We actually took a good look at this at the Expo at UTMB last year. Looks like an awesome piece of running kit. So very excited to test that out over the next few weeks. And last but not least, we've also got the new Endorphin Pro 4, the Endorphin Speed 4, and the Peregrine 14 from Saucony heading our way. So can't wait to test those three new models out from the Saucony brand. So there's going to be lots of first impression videos heading your way very soon. But for now, folks, thanks for watching. Really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe because it really is a big help to the channel. We'll be back here very, very soon. And as always, stay safe and keep on running. I've used it for a training run or a race. I make sure I clean it and wash it thoroughly. Um, <laughs> now, if I've been out on a long training run, what I tend to do is get in the shower with my hydration vest and give it a good hosing off with the, the howerhead. With the howerhead. The first thing 